We're here at the Luton Town training ground to meet boss Rob Edwards. The Hatters' eyes firmly on the top flight after another season when they've been absolutely flying. Tom Larcher may well have scored Luton Town's most important goal of the season. You know, nine years ago was it, I think, that we were in the National League. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I can't, I can't wait for that moment, going out and seeing the supporters. You know, life's about living and you've got to try and enjoy these moments because I know they don't come along very often. OK, we're here at the Luton Town training ground with the boss, Rob Edwards, in the huge cavernous gym with some minimal activity going on behind us. Hopefully we'll keep you abreast of that. And we're on a flight path as well, so as these planes roar over, we may reference that. But, Rob, thanks very much for having us here. The reason we're here, of course, is there's a very, very, very big game coming your way very shortly. The two semi-finals, though, are the playoffs. Um, two differing games, two cracking sets of atmosphere. How was it for you on the touchline? Really good. Um, I thought the first half, I mean, we knew it was going to be Sunderland are a huge club. Mm. And to be honest, I, I knew that, but I think I've got a newfound respect for them again after the, that game. It was an amazing atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, a, a friend of mine that from a long, long time ago got in touch, he was a big Sunderland fan and said, look, take it all in because, you know, it'll be special. Yeah. And, he, and he was right. Um, and then, yeah, at home on Tuesday night was was incredible, different. Obviously, it's a different type of ground, isn't it? Not as many fans, but it, they make an incredible atmosphere. Mm. So over the course of the two games, thoroughly enjoyed it. It obviously helps when, you, you know, we came out on top, but really tough as we knew it was going to be. And, um, yeah, now I can look back and think, yeah, I enjoyed it <laughs> at the time, not so much. Yeah. You see, I mean, that's, that's the key thing and, and being able to speak to managers is one of the real perks of this job that I do. And that question always comes up for me to ask about the enjoyment side of it because there's so much pressure on it. You've had another wonderful season, boxed off your playoff plays relatively early on. Mm -hmm. Being able to go into those games and now look at it with hindsight, is that one of the major emotions that comes out of it? The, the sense of a job well done and enjoying a job well done? Yeah, I, I think I, mean, I heard uh, Eddie Howe talking on a podcast a, a while back and he, uh, they asked him, can you enjoy it or do, should you enjoy it more? Mm. And he talked about being able to reflect and think, oh, that was good. And maybe look back maybe a week or two later and think yeah. I enjoyed that. And I sort of, I think I get that. Um, you know, at the time you're living it, you're in it mm -hmm. and it's intense. And obviously at this stage of the season with what we're going for, you know, there's a lot on the yeah. line. And I think y y you do feel it. Obviously, we've got to try and remain calm and, 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 and stick to the plan. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the time in the heat of the battle, it can, it can be difficult to really take it all in and enjoy it. Mm. And, and, I've, and I've really tried to, tried to do that better. You know, you know, walking out at Sheffield United, for instance, a few weeks back and trying to take in the atmosphere yeah. and, and, and the Greasy Chip Butty song before, <laughs> you know, and trying to enjoy that and think, it's you know. It's proper earworm, isn't yeah, it? It's stage to do that song, yeah. It's, it's amazing. And... and and, and it was the same on Saturday at Sunderland. Mm. I, oh, come on, Rob, try and, try and take it in. Yeah. Um, but then you just know what's coming as well, and there's a game and being focused on that. So it's something that I think I'm working on. Mm -hmm. It's another good season for Luton that's culminated in the playoffs. You've gone one further, of course, getting to the final. Um, the season that you've had, obviously you came in at a certain section. We'll come to that in just a second. But since you came into Luton, how have you found it? What have you seen? Incredible people. Um, massive thank you to the fans because mm. it, it, I know a lot of them would have had reservations and you know I, I was nervous myself about mm. it being at Watford earlier in the season taking over from Nathan who's been incredible a giant for this club mm -hmm. um, I was worried um, but I've seen loads of love loads of support incredible board who, who have backed us and yeah. believed in us um, and it's such an honest group of players who were, who, were, who were really, really good. And we knew that coming in as well. Yeah. And, um, and they've repaid us and more. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I have loved it. Yeah. I have loved it, even if I'm not showing that all the time, every day. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant club. You say about that, that sense of a bit of trepidation and a bit of worry. That's such a tough thing because players, fans even in job interviews as a, as a potential manager, you've got to give off a certain aura, you've got to project a certain kind of facade at times. We've all got to play roles at certain times. So that must be tough to relate to that now and then think when you've come in, you've got to be, this, I'm Rob Edwards, I've got, I'm the man to take Luton Town forward. 
And I think the way I'll try and do it is talk about a, a we and a collective, um, because it's not Rob Edwards going to take Luton Town forward. It's going to be that's me putting words into yeah, it. Well, no, it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be Gary and and the board supporting mm. us, and it's going to be um, myself, Richie and Trolls coming in coming to work with this brilliant group of staff that, mm. that are already in place here. And and the players and and the groundsmen and the kitman and the, the the kitchen staff and and everyone who are just so passionate about the club working together to try mm. and achieve something along with our supporters. So I, I really like to talk about us and and we because no one person no one person is responsible mm. for anyone being successful and I, there's there's more I don't know than I do know so I rely on all the expert, expertise and the people around me to try and help us make the right decisions to yeah. try and get wins on the board and luckily we've managed to to do quite well the one thing that you are responsible for is you and the fact that your career a playing career that didn't last as long as you wanted to through injury moving into coaching younger players working your way up getting to Forest Green then getting to Watford let's take it back that is is the would I be reading too much into your career so far to think that there was a burning desire to prove yourself wrong because you finished early? Yeah, I think so. You're right. I mean, when I was really young, and this is really naive and saying this, but I, I, I loved Pele. I loved I had the boys from Brazil video and yeah, video. It was with the, with, with, the, yeah, with the green yeah, yeah. Uh, VHS cover, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? I had the yeah. same one. And um, I, I loved Pele, and I thought I was going to win three World Cups. I just thought that's <laughs> it. I'm going to win three World Cups. So I'm, yeah, I'm that good. And obviously, I wasn't unfortunately but you know I sort of aimed for the stars and I did I end up doing okay mm. I, I, I got in at Villa and and, um, and and things were going quite well and made my debut for Wales and things like that and I, I sort of, like a lot of people got, got an injury and mm. um, things were never the same and I managed to sort of limp through and yeah. keep going for another 10 years or so but it was never the same mm. I was never the same um, but I wasn't that talented I was just all effort and yeah, I, I, I just, but I was desperate to, you know, I had 10 games in my career in the Premier League. That was, yeah. that was what it was. And I would love to sort of get there, you know, on this side of it. Yeah. And I'd, I, I want to try and be better at this than I was as a player. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's my burning desire and ambition. Yeah. Again, though, I need, I need the people around me and the team around me to yeah. help me achieve those personal goals. But you're right, I, I feel like there was... Yeah, I left something out there. And does that feel like a different person then? The player, the, the kind of ex-pro? Yeah, I think it does now. I and mean, it's 10 years ago since mm. I retired. And, and um, I knew I wanted to go down this route after being part of the Blackpool mm -hmm. squad and, and then the year after going on to Norwich and being part of their promotion as well. And just seeing how Ian Holloway and Paul Lambert had, had the success. And I thought, yeah, I want a bit of that. That's, mm. that's what I want to try and do. Um, so I've known I've wanted to try and go down this path for a long, long time. Um, but because I wasn't a, a, a top player, it's, it, it takes, it's a little bit of a different journey. Yeah. And um, it's taken some time to get to this point. So that journey obviously encompasses Forest Green Rovers, of mm. course, a very unique football club. Yeah. It seems to, be, to me that a lot of people do talk about that, but they've come away from that. And it's more about the football now, which is testament to the people that have been in charge of that place. Um, how did you find managing at that level and getting promotion yeah. with that side? Well, I, I, when I was leaving the FA to take on that, that role, I remember John McDermott saying to me, John, obviously technical director at the FA, mm. saying to me, one of, the, one of his bits of advice was before taking the job was, can you win? Mm. Because if you're going to go into that role now, you're going to get sacked at some yeah. stage, which is, he's been proven right already. <laughs> um, you're going to get sacked, but you've got to be able to win. Yeah. So that's always stayed with me and, and resonated with me. And it wasn't, wasn't that long ago, it was only a couple of years ago. Mm. And, so watching all the videos and watching them back, I thought, well, I like him, I like him, he's good, he's good. They'd finished in the playoffs under yeah. uh, Mark Cooper, just been sacked just before the end of the season. They finished in the playoffs, they were used to winning. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, we can, we can win there. And, um, and again, luckily going in, right set up, brilliant people, working with Richard Hughes, who's, who's now at Portsmouth, director mm -hmm. of football there, uh, and other people. Dale was a, a fantastic owner. What's he like? Uh, really supportive. Yeah. He, 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 you know... Uh, <laughs> I suppose now we went our separate ways, so we haven't really spoken we'll come since. We'll to that in a but, sec, yeah. <laughs> um, at the time, really supportive, probably mm -hmm. a phone call once a week and just allowed us to, myself and Rich, to, to mm. crack on with the football side. So that's what you want, really. Um, 
So brilliant players, um, really good blend of youth experience, physicality, technical players, mm -hmm. and, and we were able to, to achieve something. So we couldn't have wished for a better start in, in management. So myself and Richie, mm -hmm. who, who's you know, with me here now, it was um, an amazing first year. So then I see you on stage at the um, EFL Awards, Manager of the Year, congratulations, wonderful, well done. A few weeks later, uh, you're moving on to Pastures New. Is there a sense of opportunities coming along in football, given maybe that experience of being a player where you've got to be ruthless enough to say, that was lovely, that was great, really enjoyed this, but for my career, this could be the better on next port of call, hence Watford coming along. Yeah, it was... I'd be lying if I said it was a really, really difficult decision mm. because it, it wasn't... No. It didn't really enter my head. It was a... Um, we need to I want this. to go, we, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to go and we need to do this, um, to be honest. Uh, what Forest Green gave us was an opportunity and, and I will forever be thankful and mm. I love loads of people there. We had an amazing year and um, don't ever want to, never forget that. But I need to look after, as well as the football clubs and the people that I'm there with, I need to look after my family as mm -hmm. well and, and, and my career and there is a selfish element there. I don't Where? think you can be apologetic for that either. No, I, I think I, as a manager, it's, getting, it's only getting more precarious, mm. doesn't it? You're John? right. I, and, and, well, you look, don't you, 10 league games later, we're, mm. we're gone. So I knew mm. what, we were, what we were going into. But I, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Perhaps I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would still do the same thing again. And from that point of view of spending that portion of time in charge of Watford, what were the emotions going into the job and what were the emotions coming out of the job after what would be seen as a relatively short period of time? Um, I was really excited going in, really enthused, you know, the, the, just coming out of the Premier League. Mm. Um, some really talented players, as you know, and have seen, um, you know, it was all set up and I thought, you know, the noises that we were hearing, we thought, we've we got a chance here, mm. you know, maybe there's something different that's going to that's gonna happen and we can be a part of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, the first, you know, I think four of our first 10 games were on Sky, they which were. you'd have covered. Yeah. Um, big games, Sheffield United, West Brom, Burnley, you know, Middlesbrough, those games were on TV. We, we won three and drew one mm. of them. So we did all right. And it was an impressive start. It yeah. was, and we drew a few others. We lost to Blackburn and um, QPR, who were mm. flying under Michael Beale at the time. And, and unfortunately, it was deemed, you know, not enough. And, and, and they, you, know, you know, we lost our jobs. It was... It was really frustrating, it, it, but, but also there, there were challenges there that, mm. that I suppose looking back now would have made, will make me better and yeah. going forward and um, things that I wouldn't have had to have dealt with before. Um, so coming out, yeah, disappointment, probably embarrassment, mm. a bit of anger, not confidence. Um, but then over, you know, over a few weeks later, you, you sort of get back on it and yeah. you think, right, come on, let's go, I'm ready to go again and I want to show people. There's a certain school of thought that when, I, when I've spoken to managers is you can't take that, it's easy for me to say, you can't take that personally. They're mm. sacking a manager, mm. they're sacking a figurehead, they're not sacking a person. Mm. The person is collateral damage to that decision that's been made. And from what I've heard as well, it's the first one that really, really stings because you've never been... Yeah party to it before no. is that what it's been like for you do you feel and again as I mentioned the players coming play. over this is them yeah it was a new experience mm. obviously I had been sacked as part of a staff um, at Wolves yes uh, when I was with when I was first team coach at Wolves went just before Nuno came in yes so I'd experienced a, a little bit um, but not obviously you know mm. as the head coach or manager yeah so it was the first time and yeah it's going to happen at some stage unless you're Pep <laughs> you know, really, or, or Jurgen, or you know those yeah. the, the, the big guys. And his take and, on it is yeah. win more games than you lose, and you've got a chance to stand in. Well, exactly. Which I thought was a wonderful thing to say from yeah. one of the best we've ever seen. What's your secret, Pep? Winning games. Well, it is, and, and, it, and it is it, and it isn't it? It is. It's win, and you know we won three out of ten mm. league games. So you know, we drew five and, and lost two. So it, it was um, in terms of points. We were actually kind of there or thereabouts because yeah. it was a bit of a mixed start from everyone, really. I think even even Burnley at the beginning, and then yeah. they went. But um, look, we, that's done. It's in the past mm. now. I know why we're talking about it, but um, it almost 
feels a lifetime ago as well. Yeah. So much has happened since. And um, as I say, I'm, 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 I take that, I sort of use a lot of it in some of the experiences, but I'm really pleased that I'm here now and, and, uh, and in this position. So go on then, why Luton? Why was that the one that piqued your interest? Well, I think um, if I look at the, the history of them and how Nathan had done and the support that he'd had, and um, of course he'd won games. Mm -hmm. So that's why he stayed <laughs> yeah. and, and, and had the opportunity to, to build something. But speaking to Gary and Mick, the first meeting that I had, mm -hmm. Mick Harford and Gary Sweet. What's it like you having a first meeting with Mick Harford? Well, he's, a, he's a legend, isn't he? So straight away <laughs> looking up to him thinking, wow, I've got a, I bet he's got uh, a great poker face. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's been great. I, I, I love him to bits. And um, he's, been so, he's been so good for us as well. Mm. But that, that first meeting, I, I got a real sense of these people really care about the club. Um, and... and they are going to support whoever they appoint. They're mm. going to support them because they want to make it a right decision. They know that I think to be successful, or they think to be successful, you're going to need some stability. You need consistency, mm. and um, we just had a really good couple of hours at first, and I got a great feeling from them. Because I'll be honest, I was worried. I wasn't sure. I, I thought you're sure about what? Well, I just felt that coming from Watford, the, mm. the arch rivals, yeah, and then I know Nathan had had moved on to, to a club in the Premier League, but that's because he'd done so well. And I thought, how, how do we pick up? How do I pick up mm. from that? So I had real concerns as well. But I think, you know, going through it and speaking to the guys and, and going through the, the interview process and, and seeing and meeting all the board members and mm -hmm. how you could see how supportive they were, how much they cared about their club, what it meant to them, it felt right. It just felt right. And also, it's very rare halfway through a season mm -hmm. to get an opportunity to come into a club that's actually doing well. And, you know, we were one or two points off the playoffs at, yeah. the, at the World Cup break. So in the end, I thought support, good people, good players, you know, a club that's sort of used to winning at the moment mm -hmm. as well, that ringing in the back of my head, you know, John McDermott, can you win there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ticked a lot of boxes. And it's a club, as you say, that's been on, on an upward kind of trajectory, but my word, has that been a long time coming? Given where Luton have been in the EFL, out of the EFL, yeah. uh, you mentioned McCarthy. We're talking about a club that has tasted the top flight over 30 years ago, so never tasted the Premier League, which is where you stand on the cusp of. As decades go, it's been, it's been tumultuous, to say the least, hasn't it? And are, you, are you aware of that sense of kind of history, recent history, in the people that you talk to? They give you that context of, you're the current custodian, but my word, we've come a long way. Yeah, and I, and I talk about that a lot. Um, we're here sort of riding the wave now of this brilliant work mm. that so many people have put into now for over a decade, you're mm. right. Um, you know, nine years ago, was it, I think that we were in the National League. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's crazy to think, isn't it? It is. Um, and that's down to, again, Gary and the board who were supporters, support of run, mm -hmm. who have given time, dedication, finances, that, that, you know, their heart and souls into the football club to bring it back from the depths. What I really admire about them as well is that then once they've got into this sort of position, they've not then, you know, gone mental to, <laughs> to, to try and get where we want to get to yeah, because yeah. they know that, that where the club has come from and mm -hmm. what they've had to do to save it. They will never let that happen again. No, they've kept yeah. it on a sound footing. They, yeah, yeah, they have. And, you know, it's a really well-run club. And that is hard to do in the championship. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to be competitive and, you know, be financially secure. Just quickly going back to the point that you made about the people sort of who have helped us get there and the promotion from the National League that mm. John's still, you know, that's arguably the most important one. To get out of the National First League, as we know, step. is so yeah. hard. And, and to do it the way they did, that, that one is, you know, that's so important. Mm. And what he did for the football club, and everyone will remember that. And obviously then Nathan came in and, and, and sort of took it on. But you know, there's been so many people that have played a massive role to help get this club where they are. Mm. And, and we're just really thankful and lucky that we're here now, sort of, you know, riding off the back of that. Yeah, the baton being passed that's on. That's it. I mean, similarities, of course, with Coventry. Mm. You look at how long Mark's been there, five seasons when he, he took over, they were in League Two. Again, that side of the equation, he's on the verge of taking them to the Premier League. So we've got, and it's an overused word in, in football and, 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 and probably professional sport, a fairy tale almost for mm. whoever wins this particular game. 
Can, do you feel that the similarities between yourselves and Coventry are the bits in that that you see that you recognise and that you may have heard stories about that is similar to yeah. what you, what's been alluded to? There, there is similarities, no doubt. You know, we were playing against each other only a few years ago in League Two. The job that Mark has done cannot be understated. Mm. It's, a, it's an incredible job. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do that. The, 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 the dark times that he must have faced and he's, you know, he's spoken about it recently and, and how difficult some of those times would have been mm. to try and win, but, but he must have been fighting fires everywhere. And so he deserves all the credit mm. that, that he's getting and rightly so. Um, and you're right that, you know, to be at different stadiums and everything else, I mean, yeah, they've had some real tough times. A massive football club. I remember mm. going to watch them quite a lot at Highfield Road, actually, when, when I was younger. Well, the remains stay of the first yeah, division of the, yeah, of the yeah. Premier League, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, you know, we, we, I was at the National School the last year to go to the National School. So we used to go to a Premier League game on a Saturday and we used to go there a lot because it was yeah. fairly close. Um, and yeah, they've had a... You know, such a long period out of it. Mm -hmm. Just remember Coventry always being at the top yeah, level. For, you know, when I was young and growing up. So there is definitely similarities. Obviously, it's happened differently for us all, but but for a position that that they're that for them to be in the position as well, they are. Mark, his staff, deserve an unbelievable amount of credit. Um, you know, he's 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 done, he's done really really well. <laughs> I mean, the the sense of respect there is is really quite obvious. But of course, you, t you now meet in the biggest game in domestic football. We're, we're just a few days away. What's, how's the emotions? How are you feeling? What's, what's the prep like? How's it going? It's, um, it's which, what we'll try and do, we, we know it's a big game. We mm. will talk about that openly as well. And I don't think, you know, you can't shy away from no. that. You know, we're here doing this now. This is, dif <laughs> this is different. Even though it's nice talking yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. I'd love we're to see you for a reason. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, it's great. But it, so it is different. Mm. But we've also got, we've got, what we've got to remind ourselves is what's got us to this point and let's, let's do that. Mm -hmm. you know, let's do that. We don't need to be anything different. Going into any game, well, obviously we can make little tweaks. Mm -hmm. little, you know, how we're going to press here slightly differently or where we think we can try and exploit them, the opposition. But that's the same for any game. But we've got to go and try and be the best version of us on the day. Mm -hmm. Contrary, I'm sure, we will do exactly the same. So mm -hmm. that's how we'll just try and keep things normal. Um, but of course, there's going to be some different things. We need to make sure we get the tickets sorted early. We need to make sure... <laughs> that's that, the big know, thing, isn't yeah, it, for the players course, and the staff? That, 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 that's been the biggest talking point today. Yeah. There's been a few meetings about that already. Get that boxed off, get that sorted. Logistically now, hotel and everything else, we're pretty much there. We've got mm. everything sorted. You know, Those things are important, so I've got to make sure. And all the staff are on it. They've been mm. great. And then in terms of planning, we, you know, we've got the structure of the week. We've known that for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just do what we do. Mm. You know, let's not try and do anything differently. Yeah. You know, we haven't got to go away or astray from, from what's got us, you know, to this point. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it just, just one, off the back of what you said there with regards, purely logistical question and apologies for this. The, the fact that we are at a club that's not too far from London, it's a 4.45 kickoff. I mean, are you going down the night before? Are you going down yeah, the morning off? We will, we okay. will. And, and we wanted to try and keep things as normal as yeah. possible. So we normally try and get within 20, 30 minutes of, okay. of you know, the, the ground when we're away from home. And with it being such a big game, there's going to be so much traffic. Yeah, yeah. You know, the last thing we want then is to be travelling a little bit long when we're stuck <laughs> oh, in traffic. Yeah. And it's just, it's not going to happen on, yeah. the, you know, on that occasion. So try and stick to, to what we normally do. Go, go the night before. And... Um, yeah, it just keeps things normal again. Mm -hmm. So you're up against a team which is, I think even Mark said the same thing, that's greater than the sum of its parts, but with stand-up performers like some Gus Harmer, Victor Jokeresh as well, who's been a tremendous centre forward for Coventry for a decent period of time now. Um, you'd have seen a lot of these players, obviously by virtue of the fact of playing them over the course of the season. Anything special put into place for players such as that? We'll always talk about the main threats of the opposition. And, um, and how we can then try and combat that. So you're right. I mean, those two players, especially, they get a lot of the headlines and the plaudits, and rightly so. They've mm. been outstanding, outstanding this year. Um, got a lot of time for both those two. But and Mark was right with what he said after the game the other day as well. Mm. There's a, they've all been outstanding, all yeah. the players, and they're all as equally, equally as important because without the other lads, that supporting mm. cast, if you like, being really good, they couldn't do what they do. So, of course, there's some... Some players that can do some, they've got the X factor and they can do that little bit of magic mm. which every team needs. Um, 
but they are so well organized, such a hard working unit, and again, more talented than what people will give them credit mm -hmm. for. Um, so we've got, we've got to be aware of, we've got to be aware of a lot more than just those two players, mm. but of course, give them all the respect that they're due. But I mean, and from the flip side of it is, you've got real game changers in your side. You've got players that have come on as a collective. I mean, you look at the likes of Tom Lockyer, Marvellous Nakamba, Carlton Morris, a stellar season he's had, not just in front of goal, but with his assists as well, Eli Adebayo as well. You've got so many talented players that if, if someone took a passing look at Luton against Coventry in the, in the Championship playoff final, there's, there's a certain element of the underdog story to it. But if you are a, a seasoned watcher of Luton Town, there's so many players there that have not only held their own at the Championship level, but are well respected enough to yeah. be one of the top teams in that division, isn't it? Perhaps now, the last two years, this club has finished sixth and third in the league. Mm. They've got to be all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lads, you know what I mean? And it's not bad luck, is it? No, no. it's not. Of course, by a lot of hard work and endeavour and, and, and honesty and the, and the grit that the lads show, mm. that, that is, without question, our sort of biggest strength. Mm -hmm. But they're talented as well. Yeah. You know, they can play. And some of those lads that you just mentioned, I think they've been outstanding. I'll, I'll, I'll say Amari Bell has been outstanding. Mm. Um, Gabe Osho has been so, so, so good for us. Mm. And, you know, in that right side centre back slot, two wing backs have been incredible. You know, the energy that they pr mm. provided, the, the, the quality from wide. So you could go through. It's, and, it's funny that you, and, and, and it's such a wonderful thing to see because. We as kind of broadcasters or whatever on earth you want to call it, you pull out a couple of key names, but the manager that sees them day in, day out, yeah. you'll back every single player to the hilt because of, of what they've done for you. And you can name all 11 yeah. plus a bunch of subs to say that these are some of the best players I think in this league. I think that's the important thing as well, the team. Mm. And, and to have success, and you'll know this as well, to be involved in successful teams, and I had to be that sort of squad player in, in, at Blackpool when we were mm. successful, is that it's, it's the lads that are right there on the training ground every single day that maybe don't get every, you know, as many minutes. Mm. We need them at it every day as well. And, and they have been. And that's so important. I've always said to the boys, say it all the time, you're so, so important. Every one of you, even if you can't, don't get one minute mm -hmm. on the pitch, on a match day, out there to keep driving people, to keep people on their toes, mm. to keep the training at a certain level, to be um, elite. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. And that's our motivation. And, and when you've got a common goal and, you, and you're doing all right and you're winning some games, it's easier to keep people on their toes and keep people at it. They buy into it and they believe you. Um, and I can't speak high enough of the, of the group. It's so important. It's, it's, it's very similar to what we do here at the League of 72. It's a, it's a team effort. And I think there's nods from everyone that are taking interest from behind the cameras. <laughs> it's not just sat here, which is an absolute pleasure. Um, Speaking of journeys, because we love a journey, don't we, in this kind of, um, everyone's got a story, uh, modern day. Pelle Ruddick and Panzu could be playing in the Premier League after being with this club in non-league. That's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, it's special. I know there's a few people that have done, you know, National League to, to Premier League and some really high-profile mm. players, but it's hard to talk about it before, <laughs> you know, because there's obviously, a, you know, there's a big, big game to come, but if... We can do it. It would be an amazing story. He is um, an amazing person. Yeah. He's like the heartbeat of the, of the club. He's amazing around the dressing room. If we've lost, he's the same as if we've won. Mm -hmm. And you need people like that, don't you? You know, and it's cold and it's mm -hmm. wet and it's great and it's miserable. <laughs> and you've just lost and you're in on a Monday. Yeah, and it's like, you need that lift. You need him and he's taking a mick out of someone and, he's, <laughs> and he just lightens it up and then a few people smile. Mm -hmm. Some of the things he gets away with, I don't know. It's only him that could get away with it. But he's amazing and he's the most honest person. He deserves so much credit. Mm. He, he, he has earned and by graft mm -hmm. and talent um, everything that, he, you know, that he's got to right now. And I, I, I would be, I'd be, there's no one I'd be happy for more mm. than him. It'd be an amazing story. And uh, yeah, he, he, he's really, really important to this football club. Um, and for anyone who's a, you know, a young person and, and wants, is aspiring to try yeah. and get to the top level, mm -hmm. he's a shining light. You know, have a look at his story. Mm -hmm. It could be a film. <laughs> well, what also could be a film is the story of Luton Town, couldn't it? Given where they've been, given where they're on the verge of. There'll be generations of Luton Town fans that have no idea mm. what this club looks like in the top division, what mm. this club 
and uh, we're of a similar age, so we, we remember that side that was a first division mainstay before the Premier League, of course. Um, how important are the fans going to be when it comes to kick off? Yeah, <laughs> they've been they've been vital for us mm. since since I've arrived. Now they've they've been wow, they've been amazing, and they've travelled in such numbers mm. as well. And uh, you know we'll 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 pack our end out, and, and I know Coventry will it'll be a special day. So the, the stadium will be full, it'll be loud, it'll be. Uh, I can't wait for that moment going out and seeing the supporters and they can of course they can play their part mm -hmm. as they have done all season long and we hope then that we can do ours uh, you know play our part and um, and make sure they're singing all afternoon long and enjoying it and make it a special day for them it's great that you get to Wembley mm. you know and obviously you know the whole big thing and the day out mm -hmm. and it's great that we can give the supporters that and when you get there then it's about winning isn't it and we, we just so hope we can we can give them a day that they're going to remember forever. Right now, are you looking forward to it? I am right now. <laughs> ask, me, <laughs> ask me that in the, while the lads are warming up, when I'm sitting in the changing room, sort of pacing around, mm. talking to myself, then uh, it might be different. But again, you know, life's about living and you've mm. got to try and enjoy these moments because I know they don't come along very often. It's, it's going to be special, so I am looking forward to it. Yeah. Pleasure, Rob. Wish you all the best. Thanks, Prats. Cheers. Thank you.